Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Plus podcast. Uh, okay, let's just get this out of the way right at the start. Making this podcast is sometimes more fun than it should be for me and and very easy to do. So sometimes I'm interviewing people I'm quite nervous about and who are really clever and who I've never spoken to in real life and who are you know, really well informed. And I don't want to ask dumb, stupid questions and waste their time. I want it to be an interesting thing. So I have to really kind of focus and work hard. And today's guest is, it just it fills me with joy. Uh, the optimism, the energy, the positivity of today's guest is amazing. So today I'm talking to Toddington Harper, who is the founder and CEO of GridServe, which is uh, a British company that was only set up in 2017, it's relatively new, that is really changing the face of of charging across the whole country loads of charging companies are installing charges that are getting better and better in the uk i'm not trying to pick on uh, uh, grid but grid have taken over a legacy business um the electric highway which was a brilliant brave early attempt to create a network of charges around the country which was you know very early out the gate and had some issues and they've transform that that network so it's far more reliable there's more charges there's more going in every day it's amazing what's going on and then they're charging hubs which we featured on the show uh, the, the first one they opened at braintree just a game changer you know you, you you you're on a long journey and you pull off and you go well there's a here's a charger will it be working is it going to be busy with other people no you, you drive into the braintree charger there's 37 ultra rapid chargers uh, on the site with staff there's toilets there's wi-fi there's shops there's coffee there's everything and you just pull up in one of the spaces and you plug your car in you tap your card on the thing and it works it just works and when you know that you don't get the you don't have charger anxiety which i think is the real uh, thing the range anxiety is nonsense but charger anxiety is not good if you get to a charge point that you know is there and it's either busy which is what's starting to happen now because there's so many more electric cars you know, or it, or the charger doesn't work, or there's no one there to help you if it does work, and you don't know how to use it. You know, that stuff is brilliant. So they've got that down. So Toddington Harper is going to be, it's just a joy. It's just a joy to talk to him. Just before that, I just want to briefly mention our lovely sponsors, My Energy, um, and they're fantastic. I'm so excited about the stuff they're bringing out soon. Can't talk about it yet, but, uh, but what they do now is fantastic. Go to myenergy.com, M Y E N. E-R-G-I dot com because they they do these two products really now. They've kind of find, find it down and they the, the, the Eddie and the Zappy. Eddie, if you've got uh, any battery storage, any solar, it's just what you need to tie it all together. If you've got electric uh, heating like uh, heat pumps or a or a, a heat battery. If you've got electric hot water systems, it can just run. My, it runs my house, the Eddie. I don't even know what's happening. Stuff is happening as I'm speaking now. It's taking some some energy off the solar panels. It's putting it in the hot water. It's putting it in the car. I don't even know. The Zappi charger is the kind of addition to that, and they talk to each other all the time. So the Zappi charger, I've just been talking about this. I put in 220 miles of range 220 miles of electric range into a Tesla Model 3, 100% of that energy was from the sun, was new sun energy, not old sun energy that we drill out of the ground and burn. New sun energy went, hit the solar panels, went down a very short wire and into my car. And that was controlled by the Zappi. Took no electricity from the grid whatsoever. And uh, if I used some a lot of electricity in the house, it would... To, it would reduce the amount going into the car until the car, but I put in, in a day, in one day, 220 miles uh, into that car. And that is, how much does it cost to fill a car with 220 miles of electricity? You've got to kind of say the marginal cost is zero. Yes, you've got to buy the car. Yes, you've got to buy the solar panels, the inverter. You've got to have it installed. You've got to pay for the people who do all that, blah, 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 blah. But I did that years ago. I did that years ago. And that was made unimaginably simple by using the Zappi. I didn't have to be clever and wait, oh, I better not boil the kettle while I'm charging the car. I'll have to go out and unplug the car and boil, then boil the kettle. No, it, it does it all itself. It works it out itself. So My Energy are an amazing British company. They've been going, again, only a few years, and they've done amazing stuff, and they're about to bring out a whole new load of amazing technology later this year that we're very excited to see. 
So thank you bigly to uh, my energy for that. And um, now let's get on with the little old podcast uh, where old Robert talks to lovely, much younger Toddington about the future of charging, about the urgency of our, uh, the necessity of us to, to really start shifting the dial turning down the burning fossil fuels and turning up the renewables and the electric vehicles and everything that goes with that. So, please welcome to the Fully Charged Plus podcast, Toddington Harper from GridServe. This is one of the more unusual podcasts we've done where I don't think I've ever done one with anyone in a car. (laughs) <laughs> so what's really good is you're in your car, you're in an electric car next to a, a grid serve charger on the motorway in the UK, and you've got a really good signal because the, 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 the signal's crystal clear. That's, I'm, I'm afraid I'm as impressed with that as I am with the charging network. <laughs> uh, do, do you want to know something slightly funny, Robert? I'm not sure if I've revealed this one to you as well. I'm actually at Warwick Services, which is Welcome Break, um, outside some of our charges. And actually, right. Warwick, Warwick is my middle name. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> no. it, made, it made no sense to me for a very long time. So Toddington, I just got my head around. Toddington M1 Services, you yeah. know, Heston M4. And I could never work out why they'd called me Warwick. And, and I never really got a straight answer either because my all I really ever got was my mum said, well, I wanted William and my dad didn't. So we kind of, you know... <laughs> That was you landed on Warwick. There was somebody else involved, and it made no sense at all. But I went to university in Manchester, and then one day on the way in, I kind of pulled into Warwick Services, and I was like, "Aha, that's that's it." <laughs> <laughs> it all made sense. It is a, it's a very you come from a very unique family where you're where you're. I mean, <laughs> I think a, people out, out, outside the UK just won't get it. I don't know how you could explain it to say to an American. You go, well, you know. It's just Toddington is named after a, a rest stop, a motorway rest, a, a highway rest stop. That's first name and second name, best. but the second name first accidentally. Name. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, he's, he's named after two highway rest stops. That's as close as we can get. Yeah. The second one was destiny. You know, the first was intentional. But anyway, yes, yes, yeah. But that's so. Here's the thing. So, as we all know, because I did when I knew I was doing this, I I can't remember where I stopped. I stop somewhere I don't normally stop, and I charge somewhere I don't normally charge just to do it. Okay, great. Grid serve charger, drove up, plugged in, tapped with my card, boom, it worked. And I just wanted to do that so that I knew that, and it was one that I know I've used in the past, and we don't need to look back. We should only be looking forward. But I know I've used that same one in the past, and it, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, it, hopefully no so, boom. Hopefully there was like a welcoming clunk, you know. <laughs> yes, a welcoming. Yeah, there was no boom. No, no, there was just a clunk. Yeah, clunk. And, and, it, and it worked. So that was uh, so. I mean, because I've just had a look at the the grid serve map. So that is an amazing achievement because it's just the logistics and the the cost and the people involved to install all those. I'm not talking about the hubs, just the replacement. Uh, charges on the on the motorway network is it, it I and mean, have you done all of them yet is that are they yeah, all done we, yeah we did them all a long time ago actually we did them all right. i think in about 10 months so we changed wow. um all of the charges on 85 percent of the motorway uh in right. 10 months in fact most of them we did in six months um wow. and uh, it took a little while to kind of work through the other niggles of uh of some of the some of the contracts that we that we inherited um but yeah we got them all done uh, and in addition to that put have now got six, uh, seven, sorry, seven uh, electric super hubs live as well, which is what we call groups of six or 12, 350 wow. kilowatt chargers. Wow. Um, we've worked out a long way that people don't really know what 350 kilowatt means. And actually, I, no. I would kind of suggest that hardly anyone really gets what it means because, as you know very well, it depends on how much power your car can accept. But, you yeah. know, six hubs, uh, seven hubs of six to 12. 350 kilowatt capable chargers uh, we we put in on the motor work, motor, motorway network as well uh, right. in, in during in the less less than a year as well. Wow, I mean, does that? I mean, so is there a differentiation between that and say the 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 hub at Braintree, the one in Norwich? You know, are they are you including those in that figure? Because I don't because those are sort of no, so no, no, that's, I, that's in addition. That's in addition. That's I thought because I mean, I'm, yeah. So I mean, the first one I saw was rugby services. Where you had a huge long row of how many? I don't know how many you got there. It just seems We've endless. Got Twelve row of, of our three hundred and fifty kilowatt chargers next to twelve Tesla uh, right. um, uh, two hundred and fifty kilowatt chargers. 
Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. the model that we're rolling out across the motorway network. Everything we did uh, in replacement of the existing chargers uh, was really only seen as a, as a sticking plaster um, right. for uh, you know just fixing materially the issue so that people could actually have the ability to charge um, any uh, you know any of the 85 motorway services 85 percent of the motorway services we have chargers and do so without right. any stress and anxiety um of course there aren't enough of those chargers um and yeah. so the the real plan has been to you know how can we as quickly as possible you know reinforce those so we leave them where they are and then we put in another you know six or twelve and actually we, we think we, we probably need to put in a lot more than 12 at certain sites already um yeah. so for example exeter um exeter a year ago uh we had two charges that didn't really work very well uh, we then fixed right. those with two charges that do work very well we then added a further 12 350 kilowatt chargers and you know the kind of may bank holiday had people tweeting me going guys you know the, the charges are all full <laughs> you know can't you put some more wow. in wow. so wow. Uh, you know it's a uh, it's it's really staggering progress but but it also feels that we've only really just got started um yeah. because yeah. there's just so much to do yeah, because I mean that's what I mean. One of the things I wanted to ask you was the I can remember talking to to Dale Vince, and that's who you inherited or and took over. Uh, just for people who don't know the history of, of the electric highway, you know, the, the Eco Tristy was the company that put the the early chargers in. But one of the things I always remember him saying was how how you know people would complain about them and say, oh, this not working, it's not reliable. But uh, how little they were used when they were first in, you know that that it was a very small percentage of the day of any 24 hour period they were actually in use even, and this is when they're working I, and i'm just wondering if you've seen and because i'm just so much more aware of so many more electric cars on the road i mean are you aware of yeah and you, you'll be able to see the data the increase in usage yeah so we think we've we've seen since uh, in a year we've seen three times increase so triple wow. the number of charges um and four times the amount of energy going through the network um, right. in yeah. a year and it, and it's it's exponential you know when dale put the network in there were you know a bunch of slightly strange people like me in that category <laughs> like, yes me too you know, like putting yourself in that category Robert. Wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't dare suggest it um and uh, you know a few and far between and we turned up we were grateful for a charger and we were very grateful if there was somebody else who turned up who knew what we were up to and uh, and would have yeah. have a conversation with but you know obviously these days pretty much every month is uh, is a new record that's being beaten um, right. And our, our issue these days is not do we, you know people turn up? It's it's how do we put them in fast enough uh, to cope with the number of people that are turning up yeah. uh, to provide yeah. that experience? Because what we want to make sure is that anybody who comes a you know an EV driver today turns up. You know their default experience is it works well, uh, and ideally yeah. there were lots of charges. You know it was a great experience. So they tweet their friends and say, hey, can we get an electric car? Because because they're awesome. Yeah. Charging is great. Yes. I mean, that's the thing. I, I did encourage, I did say something recently on Twitter, and it was interesting how it worked. Because, you know, I will constantly hear criticism about, you know, oh, the charging network isn't reliable, coming from people who've never used it. <laughs> so I just said to people, yeah, I know this is boring, but the next time you have a successful charge and you don't even think about it, you plug in, you charge your car and you carry on driving, can you just do a tweet to say, Done? and I honestly got thousands of tweets. Because, of course, you don't say that. I, yeah. I would get grumpy if the thing didn't work, and I go, um, you know, in the I wouldn't do it now, but in the older days, I go, bloody charger isn't working, you know, um, or you know, I'd talk about it because it was so frustrating. Whereas if it worked, I didn't talk about it at all, which is normal. That's yeah. human nature, isn't it? It's nothing well, this is the thing. So country. it's um, it's kind of like our year anniversary because it's a year since we officially uh, officially acquired it, and as well right. as replacing all the chargers that the mission was um to get them all obviously working really well yes. and really reliably <laughs> and we've actually yeah. been able to achieve 99 percent reliability now 99 percent availability wow um, which uh you know which is incredible and you know the, the thing that um you know we've dipped below that a, a little bit but never below 98 um, percent right. uh, and the only reason for that is just because it's been really difficult to get some spare parts uh, because right. of all the, the supply chain challenges, yeah, yeah. Um, we're now setting up networks of uh, you know locations to have spare parts uh, that we can kind of right. rush them to site really, really quickly. Building up you know different uh, amounts across the country, and so you now that's really going to boost it. Obviously, the target is 100 percent reliability, but yeah. you know we're, we're quite pleased because there was quite a lot of cobwebs we discovered when we uh, when we took the sites, yeah. out, took the charges yeah. out. There was all sorts of you know glitchy things. Um, the uh, you know some there's there's still you know some uh, power issues you know you, you can't uh, if you actually put charges that take the amount of power 
power dips in some of the MSA sites. We've got to obviously you know ensure that doesn't happen. Um, and that's really why we're focusing on getting the brand new ones in. So the right. um, you know, and they've all got brand new dedicated connections. You know, ten times, you know, <laughs> more than ten times the amount of power. Um, right. But yeah, it was getting the basics right. We also put um, contactless payment in as well. So yeah, it's a strange to think, but a year ago, I don't think. Yeah. I don't think a year ago there were any contactless payment devices on the motorway network. Someone will probably correct me, but uh, I yeah, don't I think, don't think so. Were. At least the, I, can't I mean, there were them. there were contactless payment devices in the country you could go to, but they were often in yes. like a hotel car park or in a shopping mall or something like that. They weren't on the motorway services. You're right. No, that was that was. I think yeah, that's so probably we, fair. We, we put we put you know now you know over 100 and whatever it is 140 odd locations on the motorway network uh, all have contactless payment devices right um, and in addition to that we put about 130 additional ac charges also we added contactless payment devices to them as well oh, um, i didn't know that i didn't know you put in acs right okay yeah so we put in acs as well because what we wanted to do because the initial um, kind of focus was to you know, replace the existing charges and mean that anybody in any type of EV could charge. We're also very conscious that there are, um, you know, there are, you know, a number of older cars out there, some of the older Renault Zoe's that, that only have AC yeah. charging. Um, and, uh, you know, and you, you know, if you want to give people a better experience as well, um, then, you know, you want to have charges that can charge um, each vehicle as quickly as possible. And you don't want to have that charger being hogged by a car, you know, a, 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 um, yeah. a car that, that goes much slower. So where possible, yeah. we've added separate uh, AC posts as well. Um, right, right. Uh, separate to them. But obviously the issue that we then have is there is only so much power to go around. Um, yes. It's been, uh, it's really, really, I think, you know, transformative, a pretty, pretty incredible year. I think the other thing that's uh, probably useful, and I'm sure you uh, had this back in the day, <laughs> One of my, you know, worst experiences on on the, on the motorway network um, was when I turned up at a site and I didn't have an RFID card, so let alone contact yeah. payment. And I rung out the help helpline and eventually got through to somebody, and they said, "Okay, all right, you want a card? No problem. It'll be with you know three days in the post." Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "No, no, no, that's yeah. really not gonna yeah. work." Um, so uh, you know, that's what contactless payment is just so so incredibly helpful. Um, but yeah. in addition to that, what we've now got is uh is 24 7 customer support um so right. someone can ring literally any time um and, uh, and there'll be someone to help it and you know hopefully right. we'll get the you know you know most of the time actually it's people who've got new evs and don't quite know what to do so a lot of yeah, times never used it. talking yeah. them through it uh sometimes we might have to reset it because people do you know things on charges and sometimes you have to kind of reset it um but yeah. if there's a real issue that something's gone wrong and there's a spare part that we need to kind of replace we've also got it in place that within uh, within a day, normally, you know, hopefully, right. you know, sometimes even same day, but if it's not, you know, if it's late in the day, it'll be the morning. We've then got somebody out there in a vehicle, uh, physically fixing a charger, and that's what right. you need to do if you want to get, you know, availability to, to where it needs to be, and ultimately build confidence. Right, but then one of the things that I'm intrigued by because I'm very aware of the kind of the grid constraints at quite a lot of the sites because you know, 30 years ago there was no demand for that much electricity on at a motorway rest stop services whatever but then i or, or i uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i remember at um y your brain tree site which is the where i first came across what you're doing you've got quite a large battery there yeah. is that am i right in you've got a battery there that basically acts as a buffer between the, the local grid and the charges is that a fair way of describing that it kind of is but it's the r kind of opposite it's a different way that we use a battery on the motorway network. So um, at Braintree, we secured a much bigger grid connection. When you're going to build a project as big as right. that, Braintree, which, which are, we've got 36 high-power chargers. Um, yes. So, you know, so that's, that's different gravy. Um, and uh, and we, we, need, we wanted to ensure that we had grid capacity protected for the future and secured as to when we need it. But we knew we didn't right. need it all on day one. So we've actually got a 5 megawatt grid connection there. Um, right. The that we so so we use that to provide grid services to balance the grid to help the local area uh, grid out, and yeah. um, we've got more capacity than we need. Often we're finding on the motorway network that um, you know we might not have enough uh, certainly for the time being. So we're actually starting to put batteries out. We've got our first well, one in right. construction now, and that's where you've got a right. smaller grid connection. You put a battery in, you you fill that battery up um, with your smaller grid connection all the time, and then to the back of that yeah. battery you you connect your high power chargers. Uh, and then ideally right. on top of that, you connect renewable energy and other sources as well. Um, yeah. All of that, uh, you know, in addition to all of that, uh, it's important then to 
um, to actually go and apply, which we have been doing for you know much bigger grid connections uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, who can you know to cope with the you know just huge numbers of EVs that's required in the mass market? Yes, yeah, because I mean that is interesting. Then, so you are there. That's basically where my question was leading. That you are because it just makes sense to you know people who don't know much about the grid or electricity like me. You know that if you can put a battery in that's effectively charging all the time, yes. or ch- particularly charging off peak time. So you know from your point of view, you can maybe save money on the cost of the electricity because you're buying electricity that the normal domestic consumer cannot imagine <laughs> you know it's like yeah. you know a lot <laughs> yeah um it's but, a, i mean no, but that, energy uh, consumption in gigawatt hours of energy yes exactly is, yeah um, no it's mind-boggling yeah but i mean that presumably then does but it, the potential for that is you could put a lot more charges in a lot more places sooner i'm is that would that be fair to say if yeah, you can no, yeah, install a battery it, there it's definitely the case so the thing to um when it comes to batteries it's really important to people to kind of understand the difference between a kilowatt and a kilowatt hour so yes you know, a kilowatt is the amount of is the power that you can charge yeah. you know, your vehicle uh, or in a battery it's the amount of power you can charge or discharge that battery um yeah. and the kilowatt hour is the energy um that uh that you know that, that, that's contained you know within that yeah. battery for example and so um you know you might only have a you know not that many kilowatts of charging power at a particular grid connection but if it's not used you know much of the time or half the time or quarter of the time whatever it might be yeah. then you can use it at, you can use it to fill up your battery uh, yeah. and when you've got a big battery full of energy then that has more power because you can empty that much quicker then right. you can empty uh th- then you'd be able to use and you can a grid take, connection right. and so you, on the back of that battery you then connect really big high power charges so yeah. you know the, the, the ev driver doesn't know any different um they turn up they plug in the vehicle gets charged as quickly as a vehicle can be charged and then in the background you're constantly topping it up and that's what we're right doing. right so and i mean is that because i haven't yet been to the, the the your new uh hub in norwich which is on my list of things to do because I, I was trying i was trying to get there when you opened it and it just couldn't the logistics didn't pan out we just yes, couldn't get there in time. but i mean is that have you got if that one got must come. Is, awesome. yeah it does it looks amazing i've seen lots of pictures yeah it looks great but does, yeah, does so that, that's our first that has, what's called a compact electric vehicle. right so um, it's a smaller it's site got, than uh, the main tree. Got 20 Yes, so it's same um, stuff <laughs> for one of better explanation. Right. You know, same yeah. amenities, um, same space, same plans. You know, Costa, Luminaire, Smiths, and, and, and so on. Um, we've got twenty-two three hundred and fifty kilowatt chargers, right? Um, ah. Which is, uh, I think, probably the most three hundred fifty kilowatt chargers anywhere in the country. In addition yeah. to that, there's eight Tesla uh, two hundred and fifty kilowatt chargers, and I think we've got six right. AC chargers as well. Um, uh, there is a battery that's uh, going in. We haven't right. actually got it in yet because of, again, global supply chain challenges. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, but that's uh, going to be a six megawatt hour battery. So 24,000 wow. miles of charge you can store in that battery. You can shift it from times wow. when, you know, renewable energy, if there's lots of it available at one time, you can yeah. shift it into uh, periods when it's when it, when it's it's more valuable. Um, but it takes up half the footprint of, in fact, less than half the footprint of Braintree. Um, right. Because uh, we have the charge actually underneath uh, the building itself and actually right, the area yes, yeah. within there for the retail space is actually larger than we have it wow so wow. um yeah half the footprint but uh but a bigger area obviously. right um you know really a really interesting design and so we, we, yeah. we kind of have like a, a number of different designs now it's kind of like finding different templates for different solutions uh because the yeah. objective is to roll it out quickly well incredibly quickly because uh, as we know and you know it would be remiss of me not to not to highlight it in every conversation you know we we, we uh, i've spoken to you many times about the overall purpose of grid serve deliver sustainable yeah. energy on the scale needed to move forward along climate change and unfortunately um it's getting more difficult um because according to the latest ipcc report intergovernmental panel on climate change uh, that came out out in april they said that we have the world has until 2025 at the latest to peak global emissions, yeah. um, or else we're not going to be able to keep temperature rises within one and a half degrees of warming. And and yeah. if you put that into numbers of days, um, it's less than a thousand days, and in fact, scarily, it's uh, it's closer to nine hundred days. So somehow, yeah. between now and nine hundred days, we need to peak global emissions. Um, <laughs> you know, stop and they've been going up, haven't they? Yeah. And they've been going up, and that that's the issue. So yeah. so everything we're focused on is how can we do it at scale. And so everything we yeah. learn, we kind of use as a template. 
Uh, and, you know, and, and our plan is both to, you know, absolutely knock it out of the park in the UK to deal with and support the mass market, but also to kind of create the kind of template and formula uh, so that we can help other you know, people roll out, you know, similar size right. networks, um, you know, similar capability networks, also powered by renewable energy, the sun to wheel system yeah. we're building um, in other territories too. Um, right. and, uh, and and as quickly as possible, because I'm pretty yeah. convinced that people aren't going to work out what we've worked out over 20 years uh, in the next 900 days, let alone roll it out no. at the same time. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, I think you're, I mean, I'm very full of admiration for that drive, you know, that makes, makes what you're doing. I mean, I think this is the, the, one of the critical things that has become very apparent to me over the last 12 years of making this show is the, you, I, I said it in a recent podcast, you know, the, the, I see a horrendous problem, like you've just described that we've got 900 days and I go, oh my God, that's a nightmare. I give up. I'm just going to bury myself in a hole in the ground. It's just too awful. And an engineer hears that problem and goes, Oh, that's that's amazing! What a challenge! That's brilliant! Let's do something about it. You know that attitude is is I cling on to with as much hope as I can muster because it is such a huge, huge challenge. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, but I mean there are there are solutions. I'm fascinated with the number of and and breadth and scope of the solutions that people are coming up with. Some of them bonkers and never work. Some of them utterly brilliant. There are, and it is it is just such a big issue, but. The way I kind of think about it is, you know, I just kind of come back to this this thought that this is on our watch, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and because the time frames are so tight, it isn't on anybody else's. And it will never be on anybody else's again, right. unless they're kind of, you know, at an age right now and the next 900 days we can do something about it. Um, yeah. Then, you know, no one will ever have the window of opportunity that we have. Uh, ever again and that's one hell of a responsibility yeah. and i'm pretty confident that because it always happens doesn't it that, that future generations will judge us and they'll say you know well, what did you do when you knew all you know yeah. you knew everything the facts were clear the ipcc the world's leading scientists were telling you it emissions were going yes. up the solutions were within reach you know you had them yeah. but yeah. you just decided did not to do anything or enough about it and, and yeah. actually i just i i live you know i, I cling on to hope um that actually we will be regarded as the as the generation that turned it around, and yeah. uh, certainly my conscience and grid service is is increasingly clean. That um you know if everybody was moving at the pace that we were, we, we would knock this out of the park. You know if people grabbed yes. yeah. this you know environmental the climate crisis and addressed it in the same way as we've you know tackled COVID. Um, yeah, I think we could do it. Yes, we must yeah. do it. I mean, I think the difference. It, well, there's not maybe it isn't a difference. I mean, there's certainly. Uh, um, you know, there are people who are actively opposed to what you're doing, you know, which is always a bit of a, I always find baffling. I mean, in, in, in terms of the fossil fuel industry and the, the, the lobbying that they do and the, you know, political manipulations that they're capable of. I mean, I don't want to talk about that now because it's boring <laughs> and there's, not, there's nothing really either of us can do about it. But I mean, the, I think there, that it has to be taken into account that it's not a, Straight. If it was just a straightforward technical challenge, it's quite mm. a simple technical challenge to overcome. But you're also you're dealing with a very very powerful incumbent industry. You know, the fossil fuel industry has been with us 120 years. Our world is built on what they produce. There's no point denying it, and we want to stop buying it. You know, <laughs> that's difficult. <laughs> it is. It's definitely difficult. But it's also, um, again, it also must be possible. Um, you know, because I, you know, it's clearly. I don't know if short sight is the right word to use, but you know, like we're all humans, you know, we're all ultimately yes, people. Yeah. Whatever company we're all affected we work, by it. Yeah. Whatever company we might work for, however we might yeah. make our living. And uh, you know, we all want the best for our families. Um, we all, you know, we all want the best, I'm sure, for future generations. Um yeah. and um and, and, and you know, there is this incredible universe. We know you know quite a lot, increasingly more about it. There are billions of stars, planets, everything. You know, within all of that, there happens to be this little tiny planet that we live on called Earth, and it's the only thing that we know that sustains yeah. life. It's the only way that we have to get to it. You know, maybe Elon will sort something out on Mars. You know, you know you <laughs> take, take your hat off to him if anyone can. He's, he probably can. Yeah. But, uh, but he's very uh, welcome to live there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, not that keen. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, and and so. You know, is anyone really diametrically opposed to protecting life on a planet as we know? It? And, you know, I, I guess it's a big topic for people because we're kind of like, you know, 
it's almost too big a thing to think that's really happening. No, because yeah. no, no, we yeah. live in a bubble, don't we? And people think, oh, it yeah. can't really happen. You need know, to go to supermarkets. That's where you get food. You know, you go and everything works. Water comes out of a tap. Everything, you know, you know, yeah. you, you go to work, and you know, in reality, we are just living in a bubble, and that bubble um, isn't sustainable. And I think the more people yeah. kind of like really grasp whatever industry that, that that we're in actually that you know that this can't can't last we need to transform it and i actually live in hope that the oil industry is going to be a big part of this solution um maybe i, mean, I think it, i think it's fair that some of them will be i mean there's without question there's some of the oil industry companies that are you know they are investing in renewables and in even in car charging i mean you know i've used the i've used the the shell charger in fulham and it's great it works it's very easy to use you know, yeah, so they, I mean, I they are doing it, but it's a one of the challenges slightly how, token. How big they are as you know, organisations, and you know, it is quite yeah. difficult to, to kind of bring about change when you are that size. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm possibly Huge a bit change. close to it because I I uh, <laughs> I think of I think of oil as old sunlight. That's how I think of it, and I'm just yes because the energy in oil. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the energy in petrol and diesel you know the energy the reason we dig it out the ground is because there's energy in it that energy is stored sunlight you know captured from you know photosynthesis plants animals algae from you know hundreds of millions of years ago Uh, and that's what we want we want that stuff and it just happens to be that it's bound up with uh, with carbon that kind of link you know has stored that energy um in you know hydrocarbons um and uh and, and that's what's causing the issue um, but we've got to yeah. a point in history where we know it's a problem. We know it's unsustainable. We know there isn't, um, uh, you know, it's not going to last forever. Um, and it's now more expensive. And I think the, the great yeah. thing about electric cars, you know, I'm sitting in one now, as you, as you can tell, is they're just fantastic, aren't they? I mean, they're, they're brilliant, yeah. fun to drive. They're less expensive than petrol and diesel cars. Um, and so I, I just kind of, I, I guess I live in hope. I, I'm definitely an optimist that, uh, you know, that perhaps big oil and some of these entities that have made huge amounts of money off, off old sunlight um, will at some point and hopefully are now pivoting to, uh, to, get, to get a bit more involved in new sunlight. In new sunlight, it's a very nice. It's a very nice notion. <laughs> Don't leave the old sunlight. Leave the old sunlight where it is. Let's yeah, have the new one. Three hundred yeah. million years. Like look yeah. up, not down. And there's another. There's a yeah. simple way of doing it. You know, you got all these people staring down. Go, oh, the solution's down. Yeah, yeah. And there's this kind of yeah. giant fireball in the sky where all the energy came from in the first place. And yeah, and shining. Down. I mean, because that's. I, I was. I was speaking to an engineer a few couple of weeks ago. Who works? Who worked in, in, in offshore oil? And it was really interesting. And uh, he now works in wind, in offshore wind. And he's a kind of—I don't even know what you call a management consultant level. He's sort of a you know not a young man. He was an older man, but very experienced. And and we talked about the, those two the two transitions that he was aware of was one, you know, the oil industry in the UK and Denmark and you know Scandinavian countries is very good at putting massive things far out at sea that don't fall over and don't sink you know they've been doing it for 50 years offshore oil and so they're really really good at putting massive things wind turbines off the off the coast you know to capture wind and everything and that's that there's a a bit a really obvious transition of skills the people who've worked in the oil industry are now working in offshore wind but the other one is oh god i had it at the tip of my tongue uh uh what was the other one? Because <laughs> there was the other one. Ha! Ah, yes, drilling. Because uh, we went to see, uh, uh, he, I mean, he was aware that there was a lot of drilling going on that wasn't to find oil. It's for geothermal energy. So there's a whole new tranche of, you know, people working in, in, in absolutely using the, exactly the same equipment to drill really deep holes to put in pipes to extract heat. To They're doing a big one in... Uh, at the Eden Project, the one that I know about in this country, but it's happening all over the world. So, yeah, I mean, an interesting transition. And in a way, what you're doing is replacing fuel pumps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, know with, yeah, with, uh, with in a sense, that, isn't it? With, with ones that ones that pump new sunlight as opposed to old yeah. sunlight. Yes, yes, it's new sunlight pumps you've got. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it is. Although, yeah, charges. Um, so, um, but um, the uh, but you, you actually kind of reminded me that um, that the you know, you, you are absolutely right. There's, the, you know, huge companies with incredible resources, amazing skills that, you know, if everyone came together, can kind of knock it out of the park. Yeah. Uh, there was this, um, I read this amazing book called The Prize. I think it's Daniel Jurgen, The Prize, about the oh, world yes. history. And I'm pretty yeah. confident that was where I got this uh, this quote from, from the 
kind of old kind of Aramco Saudi oil minister who said the Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stones. No, that's and right. The Iron yeah. Age won't end because we run out of oil. Because yeah. um, we run out of oil. And I think that's the case. So, you know, the network that we put in um, in less than a year, we're now charging more than 100,000 cars in a single month. You know, wow. so the oil industry wow. is not ending because we are, you know, because we're running out of, 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 oil. of oil. No, absolutely. We're not going to run out of oil. Yeah. Exactly. It's because people are transitioning. The, the stats there are there. The numbers are there. Are there. Um, and, uh, you know, and again, if we, if we as just humanity kind of put our mind to it and these huge companies realize that actually, you know what, old oil, great, it's giving you some wealth. But why don't you use that old oil, that old sunlight wealth? to kind of get involved yeah. in the kind of new, you know, sun to wheel, new yes. sunlight wealth game. Because if they do it, if we do it and across the world, then just wouldn't it be amazing, you know? And, and, yeah. and by 2025, at, at 900 days from now, we're kind of like, everyone's patting themselves on the back going, you know what, knocked it out of the park. And I yeah. just kind of live in hope that um, that, that, uh, that that can and is going to happen. And so, you know, as I said, we get onto this because every single thing that we do is a template um and uh you know we're still learning our craft we're still kind of working yeah. it all up but yeah you know that can be with the right skills the right capital the right people the right mindset it can be deployed you know very very quickly across the world but then i mean just explain to me just so that the listeners understand because there was a quite a long period in the early development, I'm just thinking of, you know when you and i were first driving electric cars there were nowhere near like a hundred thousand electric cars on the roads of the UK anyway, let alone 100,000 a month charging. You know, there would have been, there was probably 20 electric cars charging a month. You know, that would, I mean, that is a staggering increase when you think of that, what that means now. It's a, a huge change. But the, um, the, I've had another log jam. It'll, it'll clear. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, hundred thousand a month figure. Uh, yeah, hundred thousand, Rob. Us too. It's a pretty, it's a pretty amazing. Yeah. Thing. It's just, I think it's a, I think it's a signpost that says, um, you know, the mass market's coming. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it took a long time, yeah. to, a while to kind of get here. I think is without a doubt, Elon Musk changed the, uh, you know, yes. changed, changed the momentum. Uh, you know, I think but no, the, 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 the thing I was going to ask is, is, is in, from just from a, a very basic sort of business, long term business point of view. Because in the early days of charging, there, you know, for instance, the Ecotricity Charging Network, as it was called then, was free to use. Anyone could use it because it was presumably subsidised. It had backing from Nissan, I remember that, and Renault. And you just and we, when they first started charging, everybody kicked off. It was amazing how angry people were. Wait a minute, you've been getting free fuel for the last five years. Now you have to pay a very reasonable amount for it. You're really, really angry. You know, it's a very classic mm -hmm. example. But I mean, it, uh, is the I'm not sure it is because you wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't. But is the business case sound for putting in chargers, buying electricity, selling it to people in cars? Y y can you make a living out of that, or is it a loss leader, and you have to do something else to 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 fund the business? You definitely can make a living out of it. Um, it's you know, it's it's getting better all the time. I think the thing that um, that you know we focus on isn't just kind of getting energy and uh, putting it into vehicles, but it's actually making that energy in the first place. We're actually yeah. har harvesting the energy. We don't make it the sun; it comes in the sun. But yeah. you know, harvesting it, um, uh, and then and then using you know a way of putting that into the grid or directly into chargers, and then supplying it through to customers. Uh, and we're also yeah. leasing electric cars, as you know, and and actually, yes, we, of course, uh, yeah. We we should have boost. In fact, I should say, I've got to say, I've got to say, our, our birthday yeah, our birthday celebration thing that we're uh, doing. We're up, actually wrapping six of our chargers on the uh, electric super hubs um, with the birthday celebration. Um, right. And uh, and if people tweet the hashtag, what is it? What is it? What is it? G <laughs> What's the hashtag? Electric Highway B Day uh, into the draw, um, then they'll be able to have a chance to win a thousand miles of free charging across the network. Oh um, wow! So yeah. what is it? Say it again. It's G G S. It's a hashtag. It'll be it'll be on the hashtag. Network, I'm pretty sure. But oh, well, we'll put the link. We'll put the link in the show notes. Highway yeah. B D A Y. Um, but I think they've got to take a picture. Uh, right. To, here we go. I've, got, I've been told this to enter. Drive must find the grid <laughs> birthday wrap charges hidden across the network and submit an image on Twitter or Instagram tagging grid serve and using the hashtag that to enter the draw. <laughs> and then we give them a thousand miles of free charging. You know, or, which which is from our perspective a great thing because you know again as, as I said we're, you know we're making 
um, gigawatt hours of, of some like gigawatt hours, a million kilowatt hours. We're distributing many, you know, many million kilowatt hours into electric cars. Right. And again, it's just kind of part of the whole part of the whole piece to kind of, again, make it exciting. Um, I got onto this because we're le- leasing electric cars. We started uh, last month um, by saying if anyone wants to lease an electric car, I don't know if you remember, but but we're just yeah, trying, we talked about it. At the, we're trying to do uh, good. Yeah. We're trying to do yeah. good. So you know, for every car somebody gets leases from us, uh, we found this amazing tree planting charity, and we, we actually pay to have have um, have a hundred trees planted. And we've right. now added to that that anyone leases a car from us, we um, we, uh, we we actually will include a thousand miles of charging across the network as well. Right. Um, and uh, you know, you answer your question. Does that all make sense? Well, if you make that energy from solar energy, um, yeah, then then it absolutely does. And and the important yeah. thing about that is that we're also in an era where uh, petrol and diesel, old sunlight, are so getting, expensive. Is getting incredibly expensive. Yeah. Incredibly yeah. expensive. And uh, and solar energy, um, I guess, if you skip the three hundred million years, is now a lot cheaper. Um, yes. And uh, yeah. you know, and that that's I mean, even. You know, even with the electricity prices the way they are, still it's, it's still only a you know a, a third or a half maximum um, of the cost of um, yeah. of petrol or diesel, um, yeah. which is a pretty big thing. And if you can make it yourself, I've also got solar on my home. I've got this really cool yeah. DC coupled solar system, which is very cool, um, very techy. It means you can put right. a lot more solar on your house than you'd otherwise be able to do uh, without overloading the grid. Um, this uh-huh. my house runs off. Uh, 80% solar energy. So 80% right. of the energy to power my entire house, including two cars, all sorts of gadgets, because I do love a bit of tech, um, all, comes <laughs> from, um, all comes from the sun. It comes from the sun. Earth. Yeah, no, it's amazing, isn't it? No, I've just done, I blew, I blew it yesterday because uh, uh, someone visited my house and plugged their car in during the day, which oh, is really? fine. I was here. But that's <laughs> so I had, I did use a bit of grid electricity, but up to then I'd done something like, I think it was actually 14 days, so two weeks with not one electron from the grid. But, I mean, that's easier this time of year, you know, because it's sunnier, but uh, I wouldn't be able to do that in the winter. But the fact that that's possible, I think is, you know, it it is worth mentioning because a lot lot more people could do that than are doing that now. And what all that does is it takes that strain off the grid at 5 o'clock in the evening when when there's this big peak in demand. It's not from me. It's not from you. It's not from us two. It's not our fault. (laughs) Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. You know, and I'm certainly seeing days as well. You know, even with all my gadgets and heat pumps, and you know, yeah. you can imagine and uh, you know, mechanical heat recovery systems, and basically everything you can think of that we are running. You know, 100 percent of the time, um, right? Off solar energy as well, which is just, just that is brilliant. Energy. Actually, that is one of the things we really want to do in the next year. Is because we're going to we're about to shoot an episode about all the stuff I've got in my house, which is a bit crazy. I've gone over. Oh, really? I've stopped. I'm, I'm not putting any more in. But what we we're talking, someone said you should do a series called uh, "Check Out My Solar Crib," which I quite like. That. I quite like that. But you know, to go to people's houses and go, "How does this work? How do you do it?" I mean, I, it may be an invasion of your privacy. I don't. But you know, if you if if we could do it in some way, because there's quite a lot of people. I think it's worth going to see what they've done. Well, we the guy down the road. Definitely compare yeah. notes on that because uh, I've yeah. really gone to town with my solar system. Um, right, you know, push the barriers of what's possible. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, and it's um, yeah, you know, combined with heat pumps, which is just amazing. You know, every yeah. one kilowatt hour of um, of of electricity from the sun uh, we yeah. harvest um, provides around five kilowatt hours of heat. It's is insane, isn't it? Just yeah. incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. You know, and yes. we have enough for. Yeah, two electric cars, which we use quite a lot, uh, and you know, and all sorts of gadgets just from your roof. So, yeah. you know, it, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. Here's another interesting stat for you as well. Um, oh, yeah? solar, uh, solar energy. What we've discovered across these, you know, hundred thousand charges a month, is that people charge in a very similar way to the pattern of the sun. Oh, so we, that's and, interesting. Yes, and we wow. know this. Well, I guess it's kind of obvious because people come out in the sun. Yeah. And you don't go to a local petrol forecourt very often at night. You know, people don't no. go to their local, you know, the same thing doesn't happen with charging. So, of course, the public charging network, we actually put the two together, sun to wheel, because we build the solar farms and we've got the chargers. Yeah. We put the two together, we put them on top of each other, and actually the curves are almost a perfect match. Wow. Um, wow. Which is just absolutely remarkable. Um, yeah. And we've also worked out that because people say, can you produce that much energy in England? For every acre uh, of space where you put solar panels on, you can produce enough energy for like roughly a million miles every year in England. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Which, and I heard someone on the 
radio this morning say, well, obviously solar doesn't work in England. I was going, well, it kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> a million miles an acre. Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that. that's it. it's amazing, isn't it? I want it to blow amazing. my stuff from far away, uh, far away lands. Yeah. It definitely does work in England. The other thing, just to, again, highlight it, is that... Um, you know, one of the things that people say, but you know, you're building a solar farm. We, you know, what we built, you know, a, a, a solar farm with um, with uh, you know, 34 and a half uh, megawatts, which is roughly 140, 140 million miles a year of charging. You know, right. pr- pretty, pretty meaningful. And people say, but what about what about food? You know, aren't you aren't you you know, um, aren't you damaging oh, the food? The, using the, the, the land. Food? Yeah. But what we, you know, I think the other thing that's really really important to to you know look into is that. Um, We've got another enormous crisis, and that enormous crisis is uh, is biodiversity. So, yeah, sixty percent of the world's wildlife has been wiped out in the last fifty years, according to the World Wildlife. Horrifying, isn't it? Yeah. So, if we continue to do what we've done, it's inevitable that it's going to continue to happen in the way that it has. You know, yeah. it was Einstein who defined uh, insanity as doing the same thing again and again, and expecting a different result. So, yeah. um, you know, and, and a big part of that is biodiversity. Uh, you know, bees, honey, pollinating plants, you know, animals, be- everything. And actually what yeah. you can do is if you build a solar farm, you can use that as a sanctuary to protect species. You know, there's a massive right. biodiversity right. net gain on these solar farms. And they then, those pollinators have a very beneficial effect on pollinating um, around the, you know, in the, around area, around. the vicinity as well. Yeah. So there can be a net gain. In addition to yeah. that, one of the most efficient ways of growing food that doesn't, you know, cause a lot of damage in the environment is also now vertical farming so actually using yeah. solar farms to you know provide energy for vertical oh, farms is also yeah. the phenomenal net gain so when you start kind of connecting the dots um yeah. you know, it really isn't i guess why people can look at a big solar farm and they say oh but you know look at that it wasn't like that before and you know how good is that but actually if you do it right it's really good you know in addition yeah. to the fact that you can make you know a million miles an acre i mean what, what a thing what yeah, no, that's a that's a that's a good one. I'm gonna I'm, I'm making a note of that because that's very good. <laughs> yeah, to give you the maths on that, it's roughly a gigawatt uh, hour uh, of energy um, for every um, for every megawatt peak, and you can put a megawatt peak in roughly uh, four acres. Um, so uh, so, and you can drive four miles a, a, a kilowatt hour, basically. So four million right, yeah. kilowatt hours divided by four is one million kilowatt hours times four is, <laughs> you know. So, right. uh, so one acre is a, is, is roughly a um, you know a million miles of charge every single right, year. Yeah, which is crazy, isn't it? I mean, it's such a. This is the the one I get frustrated when I get because I've had a lot of silly nonsense on on Twitter recently, where I basically record a thing where I go, I no longer respond to silly nonsense on Twitter. You know, I said that, and then I, the, like two days later, I found myself answering someone on Twitter and going, "Don't do it! Don't do it!" <laughs> so I feel very bad. About yeah. that. but you know that the, the, yeah. the, the, fr- the frustration is there are such obvious, punch you in the face, brilliant solutions to these problems that are economically viable. I mean, I always argue that that don't require us to send vast amounts of our money off uh, away from our shores to pay for fuel that we import i mean if nothing else whatever else your attitude is to tree hugging or being a you know whatever and all that nonsense we're we're spending we're sending billions of pounds out of our economy every year that we could use in our economy to build the infrastructure and maintain it to do what you're doing basically i mean you're i'm assuming grid serve employs some people (laughs) other than you exactly (laughs) yeah we're employing in the hundreds now um, I mean, right. it really is, really is growing from strength to strength. And, you know, again, people just need to look up, you know, the answer is yeah. <laughs> the answer's right up there. You know, there's yeah. plentiful energy all around us with it. It's not just about solar. I mean, we're focusing on solar because it's very deliverable and there's a basic perfect correlation between solar and, um, uh, and, and EV charging. charging. Yeah. And in fact, that's something that we think would be, you know, I've been talking to people in the British government saying, look guys, I hate you always talking about wind. You talk about nuclear. I'm personally, yeah. you know, highly dubious whether the nuclear is well it can't deliver the carbon reductions in the time frames that we have available because yeah. it takes all that time to make those it so long power stations and during that so time much. producing yeah. huge amounts of carbon um but the government loves talking about that you know loves talking about offshore wind unfortunately for us also loves talking about electric vehicles which is great you know delighted yeah. well done absolutely love it but doesn't really love talking about solar energy 
you know yeah. and actually if, if if it was better clearly understood that there's a direct correlation between the two and with solar energy you can produce the energy that you need at the same time as you need it cheaper yeah. than uh, than you can get it from other sources and it's english english kind of homegrown for whatever it's been yeah. harvested yeah. at least in the uk you know what's not to love about that so yeah. you know, the more yeah. you know the more that people kind of embrace that the the the, 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 the better um, it'll be for everyone yeah yeah Torrington, I should let you go. You've been brilliant. It's it's always an absolute joy to talk to you because it's you're you always cheer me. I, I'm always cheered up after <laughs> I've had a conversation with you. It always, it always lifts my spirits, and it is brilliant what you're doing. And I just want, I mean, anyone that uh, you know overseas or doesn't know what you're doing in the UK should you know. We'll put all the links in the and if you know, people are considering, that. you know, again, if somebody you know cheeky. Uh, cheeky push if somebody if someone is considering a a, a, a car to lease and wants to plant 100 trees in the price doesn't get a thousand, hundred thousand, yeah. thousand three miles please do consider us as an option in addition to charging yeah. but you know robert also also awesome you also cheer me up thank you for all the amazing things that you and your absolutely amazing team do you know that we're in this together aren't we this is a you yeah. know we're humans we're living in this incredible time in history uh and it's up to us on our watch to make a difference so let's yeah. continue to knock it out the park Brilliant. Thank you so much. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I think you probably will have done because he's an amazing bloke and what an incredible uh, change he's making. Um, if you get the chance, if you've got an electric car and you've not been to one of GridServe's hubs, there's going to be one getting nearer you soon. I mean, he's got... Uh, they, they, they've got planning permission already for half a dozen that are starting to work now. They've got outline planning permission for another, a further 10 or 12, and then they've got plans for another like 80. So there's gonna, you're gonna see one around soon. But if you're anywhere, if you're in Essex or in uh, Norfolk or in anywhere near Gatwick in Sussex, there's gonna be one opening there very soon. Uh, it's really worth a visit because it is a remarkable, you know, like a, a, it's something you've never seen before till you go there. You know, we've all been to a gas station, petrol station, filling station, call it what you will, you know, where you drive in and there's a canopy and there's all these things that pump fuel into your car. Well, that's kind of what the, the hubs are like, except it's a, they're not pumping liquid fuel from 20 million years ago. They're pumping electricity from solar because they own big solar farms from 30 seconds ago. The electrons are fresh and squeaky clean uh that's all uh please do subscribe to the fully charged plus podcast tell your friends that really helps tell your family you know maybe you've got a slightly annoying uncle that's a bit of a petrol head <laughs> i had lovely uncles but they were all petrol heads but then that's a different generation but uh modern uncles some of them are slightly annoying i met a couple of potential annoying uncles recently who uh who, who just talked a lot of nonsense about electric cars and clearly knew, didn't know what they were talking about. But I didn't disabuse them. I just was polite and nodded. Uh, so if you do that, it spreads the word. Uh, have a look at the Patreon link that will be in the, in the show notes and we'll, I'll put out the other um, links that uh, Toddington talked about in the show notes so that you can, you can do the hashtag GS Electric Highway B-Day. Not B-Day, because that sounds like a toiletry facility birthday i think i can't remember how it is it'll be in the links uh, and that's it as always if you have been thank you for listening